Ladies and gentlemen, season three of Modern Warfare 3, Zombies Warzone is now upon us and the patch notes have been released. So we now know everything that is changing with this update. So as per usual, what we do is go through the patch notes. And then once the update is actually out later today, I will have a video going over the battle pass and whether or not that is worth your money. But for now, Let's dive into these patch notes and see everything that has changed within the season three update. So as per usual, we have two different sets of patch notes. The first of which is the Modern Warfare 3, the second of which is the Warzone. So we start off with what is kind of new here. So we have our new maps, Emergency, Six Star, Tanked, Grow House, and then in season we have Grime and Checkpoint. New modes, we have Capture the Flag and One in the Chamber. Those are coming today. And then we have Minefield and Escort coming later on in the season. Escort's actually the one that I'm most excited for. It's one of my favorite game modes that's been in Call of Duty. We have our new weapon, which is the FJX Horus. This is the submachine gun. We have the Moore sniper rifle and the Gladiator melee weapon. These are all going to be in the battle pass, whereas the BAL-27, the assault rifle, that is the one that I was looking forward to, uh, will be coming in season. We also have a whole bunch of aftermarket parts, some new equipment, including an EMD mind and enhanced vision goggles. Those are coming both in season. Then we have new perks, including the compression carrier, modular assault rig, gunslinger vest, reinforced boots, and high grain antenna. We have our new operators. There's actually a lot of them. Banshee and Hush. Those are part of Makarov's crew. Snoop Dogg, uh, Stasis, who is the Black Cell character, and then Cheech and Chong, uh, as well as there's some skins in there for Makarov himself. And our new events coming this season are Vortex. We know what that one is. The Call of Duty Endowment event, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Blaze Up. I believe these are all of the events that are happening before the mid-season update, so keep that one in mind. Uh, we have, of course, our user interface updates, things along those lines. As far as gameplay, though, we have decreased obstructive VFX while firing Modern Warfare 2 weapons to align with the Modern Warfare 3 standards. And then they removed the variance from ADS idle sway, allowing a predictable sway pattern. So this has been changes that they've been making every single season to idle sway and things along those lines, just trying to make it seemingly easier for players. Now, an interesting one is progression. They added party bonus XP, allowing players to earn more XP dependent upon the party size. So with two players, you get 25% more rank and weapon XP. Three players, you get 25% more rank, weapon, and battle pass. And then four players, you get 30% rank, weapon, and battle pass. So they're encouraging you to play with other players. And that's actually quite a substantial amount more XP for those kind of things, especially the battle pass, which normally there's no real way to speed that one up. They have fixed a bunch of map exploits and things along those lines. Then we get into our weapons and attachments and nerfs and buffs and things like that. Starting off with the Ram 7, decreased neck damage multiplier from 1.3 times to one time. So a nerf to that, just the neck damage multiplier. For the Holger 556, you have decreased upper leg, lower leg, and foot damage multipliers. So less damage to the legs. The MCW decreased headshot damage multiplier from 1.3 to 1.1. That one is actually a substantial nerf. Uh, DG56 increased sprint to fire time. So you sprint to fire is slower with that weapon. The battle rifles, we have the SOA subverter increased sprint to fire from uh, 256 milliseconds to 268. So a nerf there and increased aim down sights time as well. So a nerf to the SOA subverter. The Bass B, we have decreased fire rate by 67. So in other words, 10%. Decreased recoil center speed by 6%. So overall a nerf to the Bass B and as well as the Jack Outlaw 277 kit. The Sidewinder got decreased sprint to fire time and increased bullet velocity. So that's a buff for that weapon. SMGs, we got decreased sprint to fire time. So in other words, a buff to the Ram 9. Same with the AMR 9. The Rival 9 increased sprint to fire speed. So that one's actually a nerf and decreased uh, near mid damage, decreased medium damage. So in other words, a big nerf to the Rival 9. That's probably the biggest nerf out of any of the SMGs for sure. HRM 9, we have increased sprint to fire time. Striker 9, increased sprint to fire time. So that's the same with the Striker, the WSP 9, and the WSP Swarm. All of them have slower sprint to fire time. So not quite the big nerf of the Rival 9, but definitely not buffs all around there. They've added Long Haul 50 and Wolf Call 300 muzzle attachments for the Modern Warfare 3 shotguns. Our light machine guns, we have the Tac Evolvery. This one overall got a nerf. We have the Bruin MK9. This one has decreased aim down sights time, so a slight buff to the Bruin. Then we have the RAL MG for Modern Warfare 2. Increased sprint to fire time, increased aim down sights time. So those are nerfs, but then increased the neck damage multiplier, upper torso, and leg and foot multiplier. So it does more damage 
but its movement properties aren't quite as good anymore. Marksman Rifles, the MTZ Interceptor got a nerf all around, so just less damage and worse aim down sights time. The XRK Stalker, the KV Inhibitor, and the SPX-80 all have increased aim down sights and sprint to fire time, so nerfs all around for those. And then I'm not going to read through all of these, but these are all specific attachments, so if you want to read into some attachments, you can pause the video here and check those out. Now, a couple changes to perks. The Quick Grip Gloves got increased weapon swap speed benefit to a minimum of 40% differing by weapon, so I think it just buffs the ones that it didn't work as well with. The Ordnance Gloves added a 20% equipment, field upgrade, and kill streak use speed benefit, so buff to that one. And the Marksman Gloves resolved an issue causing 15% sway reduction benefit to not apply. So I guess technically a buff to that one as well. Now, equipment. A bunch of changes to equipment. I'm just going to go through these and tell you whether or not each of them got buffed or nerfed. So the stun grenade got nerfed. The decoy grenade got a buff, but in a weird way, if you kill someone within the radius of the decoy grenade, it works like you have an assassin's vest on. So weird one there. Um, the flash grenade is worse when the stun is close to them, but better when it's at a distance. So kind of strange one for that. The frag grenade got a nerf. It appears as though the thermite doesn't do as much damage, but it does damage for longer. So I don't know whether you call that a buff or a nerf. The thermal barrack grenade got buffed all around. So lots more damage on that one. The drill charge burrows faster. So technically a buff to that one. C4, this one sucks. Detonation can no longer occur until stuck to a surface for 500 milliseconds. So you can't blow it up in the air or anything like that. I hate that change. I don't know why they're doing that one. Uh, the breacher drone now has more health and it moves 25% faster. The only big changes to kill streaks is the swarm, I think is a little bit better now. They made it do more damage and do damage faster. Uh, of course, there's ranked play changes. Every single season, ranked play gets an update. We get new items in it. As far as zombies goes, it says here, new content coming in season. So in other words, nothing till the mid season update. And basically all that they have done today is they have addressed issues with the game. So really nothing new when it comes to zombies. This brings us to Warzone and really seems like season three, the launch of it, the main focus is indeed Warzone. Of course, we have the battle pass. We will talk about that one later today. And then we have Rebirth returning. So I'm not going to go too far in depth with Rebirth just because we know what the map is. We've talked about it plenty on the channel. We don't really need to go with what is at every single location or anything like that. However, some new fill things are infill strikes. So there's three different infill strike. I don't know if they can necessarily all happen at the same time or only one of these can happen a game or maybe two of them, but the things that can happen is the lighthouse can get destroyed, the prison roof can collapse, and the water tower can get destroyed as well. So all in the center of the map, and again, I don't know if they all happen at the same time, but it's going to change up the way that the middle of the map plays, and I like this. It adds variance to a map that we've known for a long time. New modes, we have Warzone Bootcamp, where you can spawn into Warzone with 20 players and 24 bots. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's there. And of course, Rebirth Resurgence is returning with 44 players. We know how that playlist works. It's fun. And as far as the playlist this week, we have Ranked Play Trios on Rebirth Island, Plunder Quads on Yurzikstan, Battle Royale, so that's on Yurzikstan, Solos, Duos, Trios, and Quads, and Resurgence on Rebirth Island, solos duos trios and quads so i like what they have done with this one they made it very straightforward you can either play on your Zikstan or you can either play on rebirth with however many players you want so that's a thumbs up in my book they've now added a boost to progression for the player experience weapon and battle pass experience you have to meet certain criteria so the player has at least one friend in their party their player queued with squad fill enabled the player queued with stay with squad enabled at the end of the previous match. Now, it appears as though the first game you play will give you a thousand experience, then the second's 1500, third is 3000, and fourth is 5000. Now, if you really wanted to level up something fast, would it not just be best to go in with a squad, die immediately, and then get 5000 experience over and over and over and over again? I could be wrong. It might take longer than I think, but. I, I don't know. There might be something that I'm missing there, but I, I that's the first thing I thought of when I read that. As far as new gameplay changes, buy station shuffle. So in other words, the buy stations have moved around. Uh, another new mechanic is squad assemble. If you land with your squad, you get additional experience, cash, and advanced supply UAV. I, I don't know why they have introduced that one, but that's a new one. We talked about that before. 
There's a new Gulag public event where you have to climb out of it on a ladder. There's also a new thing on Rebirth Island called biometric scanners where you can get various different key cards. Um, and when you get them, you can put them into the biometric scanner and then they will give you various different items uh, all the way up to 10 items at a buy station or two classified weapons with Orion key card. So that's things like the ray gun, things along those lines. There's also smart displays around the map. These I believe were on Vondel, but I could be wrong. Spy drones is a new contract where you can eliminate swarm drones and you can complete the contract that way. There's a new field upgrade called squad rage, which essentially works like battle rage, but for your entire squad within a limited area. And there's also a resurgence champions quest as well. So this one is going to be on rebirth Island. It can give you various rewards upon completing it. As far as ground loot, Molotovs, thermites, and EMD grenades have been removed. Supply UAV killstreak got some improvements. So added a new functionality that highlights supply boxes through walls now only displays legendary and favorite supply boxes to reduce minimap noise. They also made some changes on yours stand to the heavy chopper, just the amount of damage it takes from various different things. And of course, the glue log loadouts have been updated. As we already talked about, we have our new weapons, everything like that. That's the gladiator if you didn't know what it looked like. Same with our aftermarket parts and everything new along those lines. So here we get into our bug fixes and changes and such for Warzone. And the first thing that we have is actually lethal equipment. So the Semtex damage radius decreased and the outer damage increased. So you deal more damage at the outer edge of the grenade. However, the damage radius is smaller. Breacher drone damage radius increased, outer damage decreased, inner damage decreased. So in other words, it does more damage over more of an area. However, the amount of damage that it does is lower. The Claymore just got buffed all around. The Molotov got buffed all around as well. The Drill Charge got quite a substantial buff. Same with the Thermo Bear Grenade, as well as the Proximity Mine. However, the inner damage is a little bit less. So its max damage is less, but the overall damage is more. And the C4 got a buff as well. So a lot of buffs to a lot of these, except for the Semtex, it didn't get a big one. So the snapshot grenade got some interesting changes. So the outline duration is increased to five seconds. The radius that it works is 15 meters. It will now require line of sight to work properly. However, battle hardened will counter it. So just some changes there. Scatter mine got a nerf. Overall, it appears as though the mosquito drone got a nerf. However, the radius, the explosion radius is bigger like some of the other things that we saw. And then we get into Warzone ranked play. So no news on when your Zikstan ranked play is going to be coming, but they did make some changes to SR, the amount of SR that you get at certain points throughout the game. So eight teams remaining, seven teams remaining, and three teams. The amount per kill has kind of changed a little bit as well as the placing so top 10 15 sr all the way up to winning 100 sr there's also another thing with death fees as we are seeing here the higher you are up the more death costs you so dying is bad in other words and then your deployment fee so at iridescent or top 250 your redeployment fee will be from 120 to 300 sr but down in silver one it's only 10 sr so that's kind of the changes that'll kind of be adjusted as we go but in the various different ranks, it's much more important to do better and better as you go. Of course, we have our bug fixes and UI changes. There's not going to be too much that I go into on that one. And that is it. Those are the patch notes for season three. I didn't find anything too insane or game breaking or changing, but I feel like most of the focus is on Rebirth Island there. However, we are getting a lot of maps in multiplayer as well. So let me know down in the comments what you'll be checking out first. And we'll have another video coming very, very soon with that battle pass. So make sure you subscribe, turn notifications on, stay tuned. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace. We are, we are